Good morning, my Tabor City home here, and today we're working on the van. We're actually uh, going to replace uh, both rear uh, wheel hubs on this van, and a um, couple things. These have been actually replaced. I bought replacements for them uh, two years ago, and uh, bought them from a chain store, auto parts place. And I cannot even believe that two years later, less than 24,000 miles later, I'm going to have to replace these hubs. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. It just shows you that, you know, some of the things you buy today are just total garbage. It's not even worth doing the work if you're going to put those kind of parts on there. And the guy at the store convinced me, oh, yes, you know, it's, it's, a, it's one of the cheaper models that we have. But everybody's talking phenomenal about it, and it's great. Well, whatever. Here I am. Less than two years later, less than 24,000 miles later, replacing them. Um, lesson learned. So, so we're going to replace both of them. One of the ways that you can tell that a hub is bad is when you're driving down the road, it roars. Hopefully, we'll get the tire, this thing jacked up, and I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about there. And then uh, you can diagnose the side. Even though we're doing both sides, you can diagnose sides sometimes by getting a long sweeping corner. If you can get on an interstate or something like that and get a long sweeping corner, you can diagnose uh, one side over the other, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, you know what? Let's get to work. So one of the things that you can uh, do in order to hopefully diagnose a bad wheel hub is you do that. That should not sound like that. <laughs> should not sound like it. That should be just as smooth as you could get. And, uh, you know, that should tell you it's bad. Another way that you potentially can tell. Now, I don't know if you can see that real well, so I'll do it again. See how much play is in that wheel? You have that much play in a wheel like that. That wheel hub is bad. So, this thing's bad enough that, uh, I told Miss My Tabor City Home, I was like, you know, you're going to have to drive my truck. Um, a black one that I have, I was like, you're going to have to drive that to work. i got to get these subs changed. There's no way you should be driving this down the road. I hadn't driven her van in a while. And uh, the other day, we went uh, in her van. And, I mean, I was, I was absolutely surprised. Because the last time I drove it, yeah, I could kind of hear the hubs a little bit. Um, and I thought, well, maybe i got a month or two to... to get the get these things together nope um i mean it was a matter of like two weeks from the time i started hearing the, the roar going on and bam that these things are totally going to pop so um unsafe for her to drive without questions so she's driving a truck and we're fixing her van let's get to it Okay, so one of the reasons why we start out and we loosen the lug nuts before we jack the rear wheels off the ground is because we're going to need that force um, of the lug nuts pushing against studs with the tires on the ground um, to help us get that done and break those lug nuts loose. <clears throat> Once they're broken loose, we can go ahead and... Uh, Jack the van on the ground. Yeah. So another question that I get asked sometimes in these videos is how long did this whole job take? Well, this is a little bit odd of a situation because we're changing two hubs. But 
It is 11 o'clock. So we will see. Now mind you, that's 11 o'clock. <laughs> we don't have all of our tools laid out, and yada yada yada. So, I mean, if you had everything you needed laid out, it would take you less time. But. So, the next thing that we got to do is we're going to go ahead and take this brake caliper off, okay? And once we get the brake caliper off, this uh, rotor will come off, okay? So, brake caliper is held on here, right here. Um, and I'll get you which torx that is, or yeah. Um, I gotta go get my toolbox and I'm not gonna have you guys sit here and wait while I do that. So through the magic of video, we're gonna shut the camera off, kill the mosquito, and edit this thing. Alright. Alright, so <clears throat> here we are. I know it looks like a mess to you. I know what I'm doing here. I will I know where everything is. I know exactly what's supposed to be going on with it. I just wanted to show you guys. Here is the old wheel hub that we just took out, the new wheel hub that we're putting in. Um, this particular part right here is for the ABS sensor. If you don't have ABS, then you don't need it. But this is for the ABS sensor. Um, one of the things that may happen with a car is if you have a, a, car, a town and country like this and you start getting an ABS light on your dash and you're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what that is. If these hubs go bad, sometimes it'll set off an ABS light and... Uh, you know you will you'll be wondering why your ABS lights on and it's actually a bad wheel hub um, the other thing is sometimes if you only have one wheel hub going bad sometimes you can diagnose that by uh, driving it down the highway and the thing is if you're driving down the highway and let's say you're going straight and you come up on a long sweeping left hand curve and you turn the wheel to you know, you hear that roaring in the rear end and you turn the wheel to the left and that roaring goes away then it's your it's your driver's side uh, rear wheel hubs going bad and the reason is as you turn the vehicle to the left the the vehicle kind of tilts over to the right and it puts all that pressure on the right on the right side wheel hub and alleviates pressure on the left wheel hub and that's why it stops roaring consequently if you turn if you take a long sweeping right hand curve and all that pressure goes to the right hand you'll really hear it it'll it, it'll really it'll really roar for you so that is another way to diagnose which rear wheel hub is uh, going bad but as i showed you at the beginning of the video you know ultimately uh once you've done that and you feel like you know which wheel hub it is jack the vehicle off the ground grab it in the top and bottom and if you can play with it, if you can get that shift out of it, that's a no boy, no, that's no good. That, that's just not gonna work. Um, that is an unsafe condition. And, uh, you know, I love Miss My Favorite City Home. I wouldn't want her getting hurt. So, I don't know. We'll see if you guys can hear this. I mean, that's just turning it by hand. You can imagine going down the road at 60 miles an hour, how loud that would be. Um, consequently, here's a new one. See? So, bad wheel hub. Um, let me see here. This bat popped off this thing while I was taking it off. Let me see if I can get it off real quick and show you inside. Ruby, my screwdriver! Let's 
So, this is what the inside of one of these hubs looks like. You know, it's it's bolted together, um, and if you can see down in there, you can see. Let me see if I, you can see there's bearings down there, and you know those bearings are what keep the uh, keep the thing moving, and those bearings go bad, and then it gets all loose, and as the bearings wear through, and the tolerances get larger inside there when they start making noise um, everything in there should be relatively tight so, um, a couple little housekeeping things with this uh, I know I you know I told you guys um, how long sometimes you guys ask how long this stuff takes it took me roughly 30 minutes to take this wheel hub off from the time I took the tire off to the time I had the, the hub off everything ready to go um, should take me roughly about the same amount of time to put everything back together. So about an hour, about an hour a hub, um, is, that's, that's pretty average. Um, so if you're taking this thing to a shop, and I had a neighbor who did this one time, she took her car to a shop and they wanted to do the wheel hubs and they told her it was three hours per hub. Um, tell them they're lying. Um, tell them that, you know, you're not putting up with that garbage. And, uh, now, I, again, I don't work on exotic cars. I, you know, I don't know if a Ferrari might take three hours or something. But I can tell you on a, on a Chrysler Town & Country, on a PT Cruiser, uh, you know, on, on a lot of these different cars, three hours to do that is just a, an astronomical amount of time. And at today's rate, $80, $100 an hour, yeah, no, no. Um, I have no idea why. Why we've gotten to that point in the world where we're doing that to people but that's that's just not right and it's one of the principal reasons why i work on my own vehicle number one i know it's unright. right number two you know uh, we've just gotten into a society now for the most part where uh you know we just we just lay it on people and not care and you know that's not who i am and i've helped my neighbors out before uh changed some hubs on their cars things like that and I ain't charging none. I mean, when I worked in a garage, it was fifty dollars an hour. I feel like that's probably a pretty decent uh, rate. And at fifty dollars an hour, that was fifty dollars an hour for the repair of that fifty dollars an hour. Twelve dollars an hour of that was a rent of the bay for the mechanic, and then they paid eight dollars an hour to the shop. So. You know, twenty dollars of that fifty dollars went to the guy who owned the gas station. The mechanic made thirty dollars an hour, and you know their thing was, um, we looked at all the books, Chilton and all those other books, but their thing was they always, you know, they were trying to a job like a wheel hub wasn't a job where they were going to make a tremendous amount of money, so they just tried to get it done and get it out of the way. They did those kind of a the guy who owned the, the garage did us his courtesies. Um, they were small jobs. You weren't going to make a lot of money, but he divvied them out to each mechanic, and each one had to do a certain amount of those kind of smaller jobs um, to get the bigger jobs that came in. And, you know, brake jobs, things like that, you never made tons of money on them, but, you know, that, that was kind of the paying the penance to, to get the bigger jobs too. And I felt like that was always a, a justifiable, good way to do it. Um, and you know they again they just tried to shag through those things as quick as they can to get to some of the bigger jobs because some of the bigger jobs were actually a flat fee you know a rebuild on a motor a rebuild on a chevy 305 or a rebuild on a ford 390 a ford 390 something like that was a flat out you know you're going to make x amount of dollars and that's where guys could really uh, maximize their money because they could take that motor out of the car real quick um do the rebuild on it get it back in the car and hour by hour they probably made out to the good they probably got a couple you know free hours worth of work out of it on the flat fee but you know if they got in there and, and they had problems and there were issues and it took longer and they didn't get another job and, you know that was always the risk for them so um so that's what we did anyways 
All right, I'm gonna put this side back together and I'm gonna walk you guys through on the next side. I wanted to do one side just to make sure I had the process down so you guys didn't have to struggle along with me because you know it's been like I said two years since I did this. So we're gonna get this put back together and then we'll take a look at the other side. All right. Okay, so um, these are some of the things that you may need in order to do this hub jump. I got two four by fours here, um, chisel and a hammer. Uh, that is to get the hub out of the assembly if need be. Um, may end up having to show you that. It depends on whether or not this one is kind of uh, corroded in there. You're going to need a clamp to compress the caliper when you're done so you can get the brakes back on. Torque wrench. Um, the bolts that actually hold the hub onto the van are 18 millimeter bolts. Um, of course, we need something to take lug nuts off. I use a high temperature grease, the same grease I use in tobacco. Um, and I use it on the slides for the brake calipers so they don't seize up. You're going to need uh, something to get the, the brake pads off. This is a T30. Um, I use a couple screwdrivers for the springs that are in the brake pads. I use Loctite on the bolts that hold the hub on. I got this little pair of pliers right here. Sometimes that's useful in getting the springs out. A couple of, of, of uh, what do you call it, ratchets. Um, again, a breaker bar with an 18 on there. Is always a good way to get them broke off. I take uh, before I take the hub off, I take the bolt off that holds the parking brake on. That's a 13 millimeter, and then you're going to need a T45 uh, to get the uh, brake caliper off. So, and then uh, I have a breaker bar here in case we need it to get some of the to get the brake pads or, or some of the other stuff off there. And then of course you're going to need your tunes. And uh, for the purpose of this, we won't be listening to any music because. YouTube will pick it up and say that there's copyright on it, and you know, that's uh, is what it is. So, I always watch these X bar things. You watch them old NASCAR races, man. Them guys, you guys can fling these things. Coming up. You know, we're blessed in the state of North Carolina to have both Camp Lejeune, we have Cherry Point Naval Station, and then um, Fort Bragg. And Air Force bases, and there's a lot of military in North Carolina. So. Out of the way. All right, so we're going to take that torch, the T45, and come up here at the back of the brake caliper. Loosen that up. Two of them. We're going to loosen both these up. That's going to allow us to take the caliper off. screwdrivers push these things back a little bit so we know they're clear which they are we'll try with a big screwdriver see if we can get this thing headed up which we need is this little 
piece here has got to come cotton around. There you go. And then once that's up there, we can pull that out. Now these slides right here, we'll pull these slides out and grease them before we put that back on. Once we have that done, we're going to pull the rotor off. The rotor looks good, so we don't need to replace that. Now we're dealing with the brake assembly. Now we're going to take, press in, turn. Eventually you get to a point where she gets lowered. Uh, you get to a point where you got turned enough that they pop out like that. Okay. <sighs> now, we're going to take our screwdriver. See if we can get down in here. Always a part of a job that you don't like. The rest of it's just kind of whatever. And this is always a part that I'm like, ugh. It's dealing with these springs. And they are as much of a pain in the butt to get back on as they are to get off. For the other, there's actually two springs up here on this top part. So, there we go. So, get both those off. If you were worried about them at all. You know, if the springs are bent up or not looking good, you could actually take them off and get your replacement. Now, up here, this bolt right here is 13 millimeters, and it actually holds a parking brake. Let's see if I can show you this. If you push this forward towards the rear of the vehicle. What it does is over here, it pushes this this piece back. So there you go. So that's how you get that out of there. Now we take our 13 millimeter. I just use an extension because it gives you some clearance in here. More room to turn the wrench. So now we're down to the ABS. So these ABS, most of the time, I don't know why this one's not hooked. Most of the time, these ABS have these little yellow clips on here. So you get a screwdriver in there, just pry that back a little bit, pry the other side back a little bit, pull that clear. Now there's this little 
metal clip in here. So, we get down here with a screwdriver, give that a little clip a pull, and then the ABS sensor comes straight out. And that's how that works. Okay? So, now, we got a breaker bar with our 18 millimeter socket on here. Trying to make sure these are all broke loose and we'll put a ratchet on them. Yeah, this is a uh, today is when we're starting to get some of that blowback from Hurricane Harvey coming through the Carolina. And boy, is it humid! And there's a definite threat of rain and all the other stuff. Whatever. So, we definitely want to get the top ones loose first, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. But you want to release the top ones first. So, as you can see, when you put your when you put your socket down here, see there's this much room between the back of the uh, of the wrench and this bolt right here. And what we want to do is we want to loosen this up, and as you're loosening, you're going to be getting closer and closer and closer to that bolt to the back of the wrench, and you need to pay attention to where you are with that. Thank you. 
Okay, so on this particular thing, if you're backing these bolts out and you get too close to this to be able to take your wrench out, what you need to do is pull this whole hub assembly forward towards you. And that, and that gives you more clearance for the back. this whole thing came off as one piece all right so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this thing over we're going to slide the four by fours as close as we can and that's going to give you eh, about a quarter of an inch under where the studs are and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a chisel and this hammer and we're going to give it a couple of pops and see if we can break it loose. Watching that camera bounce around, that had to be kind of a shaky ride going on there. So, all right, let me go get the other hub and we'll get ready. All right, so, you got a new hub. You got the piece it fits into. So we're going to stick this back up here. Against the vehicle. And push our screws through. Put this in there, in there, in there. All right. Got our other two. All right. Now. We're gonna throw a little lock tight on this. <sighs> now when we put the hub in, we want the ABS to be up, we want it to be on top. threading anything. And then we get to tightening them down a bit. Now because you're going to be pulling this thing back in here, we want to make sure that we're not turning any one bolt too much in front of the other. So you're going to watch the front you know, watch up here and see how far that is out there and see how far that is. Well, I'm going to continue advancing this bolt so it's about that far through and then I'm going to go do the bottom one. I'm just going to try to slowly, evenly pull this thing back into where it's supposed to be.
Now we're going to torque them. Here's the thing. When I bought these hubs, I just asked the garage or the uh, auto parts store I bought them from to tell me what the torque spec on them was. And they gave me a torque spec for what they had in their computer. And to me, it seemed a little low. So I, uh, I went, when I got home, on a computer and I looked on the internet for some place I normally check torque specs that are pretty reliable. And believe it or not, uh, the three places I went, all three of them had a different torque spec for this thing. So, um, I'm not gonna tell you what the torque spec is on this. Look it up on the internet, find the uh, one you're comfortable with, and uh, go with that. Also, looking at the camera here, the battery on this thing is getting ready to die. So basically, we're gonna torque this back up, we're gonna put the parking brake back on, we're gonna put the brake shoes back on, the caliper, or the, uh, the uh, rotor back on, the caliper back on and check and spin the rotor to make sure that the uh, parking brakes um, aren't uh, touching the inside of the rotor which is how the parking brake works on these and once we're sure of that and we got everything tightened down we're gonna put the wheel back on we'll be good now we're gonna tighten everything we're gonna lower this back down to the ground tighten both back wheels we'll be good but uh camera's getting ready to die so that's it it's not a bad job uh, it is right now coming up on one o'clock so reasonably two hours to do two hubs um, yeah not a bad job this should work for Chrysler Town and Country and a uh, Dodge Caravan so anyways my Tabor City home to you fix your hubs let's get out there and do something let's fix something let's build something America's not a disposable nation God bless